What's up guys, I'm Ari Rochelle and this is Too Deep. In a few other videos, we quickly mentioned that there was a difference between the earth and the world. And many may not see this as an important topic for the church, but look at what Jesus says in Matthew chapter 5, verse 13 through 16. You are the salt of the earth. But if salt has lost its taste, how shall its saltiness be restored? It is no longer good for anything except to be thrown out and trampled under people's feet. You are the light of the world. A city on a hill cannot be hidden, nor do people light a lamp and put it under a basket, but on a stand, and it gives light to all in the house. In the same way, let your light shine before others so that they may see your good works and give glory to your Father who is in heaven. Jesus said that we are the salt of the earth and the light of the world. If we Christians, the church, the body of Christ, want to understand what our purpose is, then we have to understand what the difference is between the earth and the world. So let's start with proving really quick that the earth and the world are two separate things. Psalms 90 verse 2 says, Before the mountains were brought forth, or ever you had formed the earth and the world, from everlasting to everlasting you are God. The psalmist seems convinced that the earth was formed and then the world was formed after the earth. In fact, this isn't the only instance either. Jeremiah chapter 51 verse 15 says, It is he who made the earth by his power, who established the world by his wisdom, and by his understanding stretched out the heavens. Each and every time we see the earth and the world together in the same sentence, the earth is mentioned before the world. I believe it's because of 1 Corinthians chapter 15 verse 46. But it is not the spiritual that is first, but the natural, and then the spiritual. According to Paul, the physical has to come before the spiritual. He goes on to explain that this is why the first Adam was from earth, but the second Adam, Jesus, is from heaven. So then, if the first Adam was from the earth, and he was the physical, then would it not stand to reason that the earth is the physical? Well, let's not just assume. Let's see what scripture says. The earth is mentioned in the very first sentence of the Bible. In fact, the earth was the second thing mentioned that God created on the first day, Genesis 1.1. It says, In the beginning God created the heaven and the earth. God starts with heaven, then earth, and then light. For more on creation and a deeper look at, our, at the importance of Genesis 1 and 2, check out our creation series, which is under our Too Deep category. So we have the earth, but we have no mention of the world. In fact, the world isn't mentioned until 1 Samuel chapter 2, verse 8. He raises up the poor from the dust. He lifts the needy from the ash heap to make them sit with princes and inherit a seat of honor. For the pillars of the earth are the Lord's and on them he has set the world. But let's not get ahead of ourselves. Some will ask if Jesus was of heaven and he is the spiritual Adam, then wouldn't heaven be the spiritual side of the earth? Well, no. See, heaven is an entirely separate creation all of its own. Heaven is both physical and spiritual. For instance, God is spirit, John 4, 24, and God abides in heaven. But Jesus became flesh, John 1, 14, and when he rose from the dead on the third day, he rose as the first of the new creation, 1 Corinthians 15, 23. But still, flesh John 20 26 through 29 Jesus then ascended into heaven with his entire body that Thomas had touched Acts chapter 1 verse 9 through 11 this isn't the only time we see a physical body enter and remain in heaven we also have Enoch who walked and talked with God then was no more for God took him Genesis 5 24 and Elijah who went up into heaven in a whirlwind 2 Kings 2 11 through 12 so this now begs the question, if heaven is its own separate creation, both physical and spiritual, why did Jesus come from heaven instead of the world? Honestly, this question I think needs its own video, but basically, the world was corrupt. Therefore, in order to redeem those of the world, God had to use someone that wasn't of this world to redeem us out of the world, John 15, 19. All right, so back to the script. The earth is the physical body, if you will. It's the physical ground that our physical bodies walk 
on and live on. Genesis 9, 14 through 15 says, when I bring clouds over the earth and the boat is seen in the clouds, I will remember my covenant that is between me and you and every living creature of all flesh and the water shall never again become a flood to destroy all flesh. God's covenant with every living creature of flesh that he would never flood the entire earth again to destroy all flesh was a physical rainbow in the clouds over the physical earth. Now sometimes instead of translating that word as earth, it is translated as land so that we fully grasp what the author is saying. For instance, Joshua 1-2 says, Moses, my servant, is dead. Now therefore arise, go over this Jordan, you and all this people into the land that I am giving to them, to the people of Israel. God tells Joshua that he is taking them, the people of Israel, into the land that he promised their forefathers. The word land is the same Hebrew word, Ires, which is the same word meaning earth that's used in Genesis chapter 9, 14 through 15 that we just read. It's the physical part of the physical earth that the Lord gave the people of Israel. Now, when it comes to the world, like I said earlier, it's not mentioned until 1 Samuel chapter 2, verse 8. And just as we pointed out in 1 Corinthians chapter 15 through 46, the world was set on the earth, and therefore the world came after the earth. The spiritual came after the physical. Here's another verse for you. Elihu, the only one of Job's friends that God didn't rebuke for incorrectly speaking about him, God, said in Job chapter 34, verse 13, who gave him charge over the earth and who laid on him the whole world. In other words, Elihu is saying that who gave the earth to God to rule or who gave him the whole world to carry? The answer, no one did. Therefore, who are we to question his righteous rulings? Now, what does it mean to have charge over the earth? Psalms 24 verse 1 says, The earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof, the world and those who dwell therein. Everything belongs to the Lord. He will even reign on the earth for a thousand years, according to Revelation chapter 20 verse 1 through 6, and then dwell on the new earth, according to Revelation chapter 21, 1 through 4. So then, when was the whole world laid upon God? Well, let's go to arguably the most quoted verse of the Bible, John 3, 16 through 17. For God so loved the world that he gave his only son, that whoever believes in him should not perish, but have eternal life. For God did not send his son into the world to condemn the world, but in order that the world might be saved through him. The entire world, all the souls of mankind was laid upon Jesus when he became flesh, dwelt among us and died for all of us. John even quotes John the Baptist saying in John chapter one, verse 29, the next day he saw Jesus coming toward him and said, behold the lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. Jesus came to take away the sin of the world, not the sin of the earth. Why? Because Jesus came to save the souls of mankind, not the bodies of mankind, which is just dust. This is why Paul writes in 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verses 51 through 53, Behold, I tell you a mystery. We shall not all sleep, but we shall all be changed. In a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, at the last trumpet for the trumpet will sound and the dead will be raised imperishable and we shall be changed for this perishable body must put on the imperishable and this mortal body must put on immortality our physical body is mortal just like this physical earth is mortal and will one day flee from the presence of god and he will have to make a new earth according to revelation chapter 21 verses 1 through 4. And maybe that needs a video all on its own to really go into what that means and why that is. But for now, let's just sum everything up for you guys. The earth is the physical body, if you will, while the world is the spiritual soul of the earth. The earth is the physical ground that we stand on, whereas the world is the spiritual realm that our souls once abided in. Because we are now no longer a part of the world, but we were called out of the world according to John 15 verse 19. And just as our soul needs a new perfected body to dwell with God in eternity, so does the world 
because one day, according to Revelation 20 verses 1 through 4, God himself will dwell with his people on the new earth for all eternity. I hope you guys enjoyed this video and that it explained the difference between the earth and the world and maybe cleared up a couple questions that you may have had about this subject. If you did enjoy it, please feel free to like, comment, share, and subscribe to our channel. And until next time, God bless.